Hello, my name is Andrew Wilkinson, and today we're going to be looking at adding individual users. One thing we always like to focus on is the why. Why is this useful? So first off, creating an individual user is typically referred to as manually creating a user. First off, manually creating an individual user is the quickest and easiest way to add a single user or even a small number of users. So this is more targeted for a situation where a new employee or a small group of employees joins and it's very important to get them up and running quickly, which as you can see in the next part of the slide here, it says users are objects in the system that represent the actual people who are employed. So the user objects, that is everyone who's going to be doing work in the system. So until they have a user object, they're not going to be able to accomplish any work. So being able to add a user manually means that you can quickly set up and configure this person so that they can begin doing their job function as quickly as possible. Before we get started, there are a few key points I want to talk about. First off, manually creating a user is done in the user container by pressing insert on the keyboard or control N or going to the file menu, new user. It also uh, allows linking to an active directory account right from the start, so that's not only limited to bulk imports. Another thing to keep in mind is that usernames must be unique. There cannot be two users with the same name in the system. It won't allow it. The username is the unique object identifier that we use to track users throughout the system. And finally, when you manually create a user, you can define the user's extension, mailbox, and or default station. Now there are many other settings as well, but these are kind of the three key ones for getting someone operational quickly. The extension assigns a unique number to that user that can be called and no matter what phone they're logged in throughout the building, it will ring the person. You can set up a mailbox, for instance, so the system can store voicemails and other things relative to that unique user on in, in a mailbox on a mail server and also you can set up a default station so that the user can provision their own default station and also if their client gets logged out they can pick up calls um, that will be sent to the default station even when the client is down so there's a lot of powerful things you can do while manually creating the user you can also do that stuff in the bulk import but when you do it manually it's very quick and easy all right so let's jump right into the product Okay, so here we are in the product. You can see we are in the user's container and we want to manually add a user. We have several users already in place. So as I said, you can hit the insert key on the keyboard. You can right click and go to new or hit control N. You can also, as I said, go through the file menu and new. Okay, now at this point we can give them a name, but if we already have this user created in Active Directory, we can save ourselves some time and effort by clicking this ellipsis right here. And this will retrieve a list of the domains that the IC server is on here. So in this case, it's the education. So we will type in edu here. We click get users. So now it has queried the Active Directory server for all of the users in this domain edu which is for education here. All right, and I want to add a fellow named Adam Gonzalez, so I click OK. Oh, a user with that name already exists. As I said, usernames must be unique. So let's try a different person then. So it's retrieving a list of domains here. All right, so we do edu. Let's look for users. OK. We don't see an Adam Joel, so let's try adding an Adam Joel. Now, I could have put anything in there, but I'm just demonstrating that you can link it to an Active Directory account right from the start. So I click OK. And now, this user object is already linked to the NT domain user, edu Adam Joel. Now, you can come back and set this up later. We also could have not done that just now, and we could have done that process after the user was already um, created. So I find it's easy to do it right from the start. Saves a little bit of effort. You don't have to type the name and you make you can be sure the name is spelled the same way as it is in Active Directory. Okay, next we can add 
an extension for the user. So this means that if the user logs into multiple stations throughout the system, by giving them an extension, such as 2600, for example, when somebody dials 2600, they are going to get to this person. It's not focused on what phone they happen to be on. It's focused on where they are, and then it will ring whatever phone they happen to be logged into. All right, mailbox user. You can actually click this, and you can choose to have them with no mailbox. Um, you can search for a mailbox in uh, following directories. You can actually punch in a mailbox for this person with an IMAP server and everything. So uh, you can do that, and when you've done it, you can hit test and see if IC can connect to that mailbox. And default workstation here. This is where you can assign a workstation. Now it has to be a workstation wherein that user can provision a phone to be that workstation. And also, as I said, if the client is logged out, it will ring that workstation regardless. All right, finally, you cannot create a user without giving them a password. Blank passwords are not allowed. So you will also need to give them a password. Now this is their IC password. It is in no way connected to their Active Directory password. This is so that they can log in using IC credentials. And this will also be the password they're going to be using to log into the TUI. So it's best if you set it something that is numbers. You can use numeric characters, but when they punch it in through the phone, um, it will just translate the um, letters that you have in their password into the numbers that can be done on the phone. But logging into the client, it will need to be the letters. Okay, so once we've done all this, we will have a new user made that is ready to go. Okay, well thank you so much for joining me for this just-in-time video short.